to Morning Prayer, which comes to you live this morning, not from Poplar Farm or indeed Barrow, but the vicarage here in Wedmore. You can probably recognise the familiar surroundings of Richard's study behind me. Uh, it's nine o'clock on Wednesday, the 30th of September. It really is wonderful to have your company this morning. Thank you for joining me. Uh, if you're just pouring yourself a cup of coffee or making the breakfast or else just taking a break from those early morning chores, it's really great to have you with me this morning. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, at this point, I say a really big hello to all those of you who are uh, who are watching this a little bit later in the day. You might not be with us in body, but you are certainly with us in spirit. And as for me, this is my third, fourth day now wearing, wearing a dog collar for work. So I'm going to, I, I was thinking this morning, another day, another collar. That's awful, isn't it? That's really awful. You don't need to laugh. Um, today is a special day in the church calendar as we celebrate the life of Jerome, uh, who died on this day in the year 420. Now, you might be asking, what is so special about Jerome? Well, this book, which I have in my hand, which I'm sure you can see, is, uh, is well, what is it? It's the Bible. Of course, it's the Bible. Um, and he was the first person to translate that into Latin, um, which over the next thousand years became the basis of what, what was translated at the English Bible, was translated from that Latin version. And so the church owes a lot to the life of Jerome, who died on this day uh, in 420. As always, if there's something that you would like me to pray for, uh, then please uh, put a note into the chat box. Um, and I will do my best to include those when we get to the prayers. And at this point, I say a big hello to Richard Neal, who is uh, watching this just down the corridor uh, as he prepares to do uh, midweek communion. So good morning to you, Richard. If you are with us this morning, do drop us a note in the chat. Good morning, Angie. Lovely to see you too. Hope you're OK this morning. And Mary, good morning to you too. Um, it's great to have you with us. So as I light the candle to signal the beginning of morning prayer. Let's have a moment of silence and reflection at the start of this new day. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night is past, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Well, we come now to our psalm for the week, uh, which is Psalm 66. And all the words are there in the invite if you want to read along. But this morning I'm going to do something slightly different. I'm actually going to read to you from a different version, um, which rather the NIV rather than the uh, NRSV, which is one of the Church of England News users. And I'm going to read to you Psalm 66 from there. Shout with joy to God all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bow down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing praise to your name. Come and see what God has done. How awesome his works on man's behalf. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. 
He rules forever by his power. His eyes watch the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him. Praise our God, O people. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, O God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison, laid burdens on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. I will come to you in your temple with burnt offering and fulfill my vows to you. Vows my lips promised and my mouth spoke. When I was in trouble, I sacrificed my animals to you and offerings of rams. I will offer bulls and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and heard my voice in prayer. Praise be to God. He has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Well, our morning prayer reading this morning comes from Acts, and we continue our readings through Acts, and we read this morning from Acts 20. Uh, verse 1 to 16. After the uproar had ceased, Paul sent for the disciples, and after encouraging them and saying farewell, he left for Macedonia. When he had gone through those regions and had given the believers much encouragement, he came to Greece, where he stayed three months. He was about to set sail for Syria when a plot was made against him by the Jews. And so he decided to return through Macedonia. And he was accompanied by Sopater, son of Pyrrhus, from Berea, and Aristarchus, and Secundus from Thessalonica, by Gaius from Derby, and by Timothy, as well as by Tysicus and Trophinus in Asia. They went ahead and were waiting for him in Troas. But we sailed from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, and in five days we joined them in Troas, where we stayed for seven days. On the first day of the week when we met for great bread, Paul was holding a discussion with them. Since he intended to leave the next day, he continued speaking until midnight. There were many lamps in the room upstairs where we were meeting, and a young man named Eticus was sitting in the window, began to sink off into deep sleep while Paul talked still longer. Overcome by sleep, he fell to the ground three floors below and was picked up dead. But Paul went down and bending over him, took him in his arms and said, Do not be alarmed, for his life is in him. Then Paul went upstairs, and after he had broken bread and eaten, he continued to converse with them until dawn. Then he left. Meanwhile, they had taken the boy away alive, and were not a little comforted. We went ahead to the ship and set sail for Assos, intending to take Paul on board there, for he had made this arrangement, intending to go by land himself. 
when he met us in Assos, we took him on board and went to Mytilene. We sailed from there and on the following day we arrived at Chios. The next day we touched at Samos and the day after that we came to Miltus. For Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus so that he might not have to spend time in Asia. He was eager to be in Jerusalem, if possible, on the day of Pentecost. This is the word of the Lord. Well, if you could describe your perfect place, what word would you use? I wonder, you might use a word like hot, sticky on a day like today. You might describe it to be peaceful and quiet. Well, the writer of our psalm this morning uses the word abundant. He describes his perfect place, the place that God is leading us to, as a place of abundance. And the writer of the psalm here is making a nod to the journey of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt to their promised land in Canaan, where God was taking them from a place of slavery to a place of abundance. And just like them, we too are on a journey, perhaps not from one hot country to another or through barren deserts for 40 years, but we are on a journey in which we are being changed and refined our psalm says like silver. And yet, while in this process, so many things go on in our lives and go on around us. And we face difficult things which challenge us. But our psalm reminds us and it encourages us this morning that God has our best interest at heart. And he earnestly desires to bring us to a place of abundance. That place of liberty. That place of freedom. That we might know his goodness and his grace and his love whilst we are alive. And while we're on this journey, he asks us to trust him and to give him our lives as he leads us to that place. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are the Lord of our lives. There are so many things that are going on around us, but Father, this day we resolve again to put our lives into your hands and to trust you, even though the way might not seem clear. To trust that you will lead us to that place of abundance. Help us, Lord, to enjoy the journey as you lead us. In Jesus' name. Let's keep silent for a moment and offer our prayers to God for ourselves, our families, the world around us, but all those that the Holy Spirit drops into our heart at the start of this new day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray this day, Heavenly Father, for church leaders everywhere. Whether they are ordained or whether they are part of the, the laity. We pray for those who hold office in your church. And we pray that this day that you will continue to strengthen them and to inspire them, help them to see, Lord, where you are leading them. Help them to discern what the church's promised land is. And we remember in our prayers this morning, Bishop Peter and Bishop Ruth and Bishop Victoria. And we keep them in our prayers as they lead us here in the Diocese of Bath. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
And as one agricultural year comes to an end and a new one begins, we lift up to you all our farmers and all those who are involved in agriculture here in the Cheddar Valley on the Isle of Wembley. And we pray, Father, for their crops. We pray for their cattle. And we pray, Father, that as we move to a world which is beyond Brexit, and uh, there is a glimmer already of the end of a pandemic in the distance, the far distance, that you will help our farmers to play a part in that new future, in providing for us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember in our prayers this morning, the Church of Holy Trinity in Blackford and the Church of St. Mary's here in Wedmore. And in particular, this morning, we pray for Victoria, for Justin, for Alex, Tom. We pray for Katie and Mick, for Daisy and Ted, for Louise. John, Josh, Barney, Connie and Jemima. We pray for Louise, for Pat, for Jess and for Dan. We pray for Chris and Dee. We pray for Jack, for Alice, Rose. We pray for William and Jill. We pray for John. We pray for Ian, Hazel, Jess and Matthew. We pray for Martin and Joyce, for Heather and for Clive. We pray for Isabel and Nigel, Mike, Jane, Katie and Rachel. Heavenly Father, we lift up each and every one of these lives to you this day. We pray your blessing and protection over them in Jesus' name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, we beseech you mercifully to hear the prayers of your people who call upon you this morning and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do and also have grace and power faithfully to fulfil. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And so, rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord blesses and preserves us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, that brings us to the end of our time together this morning. If you can join us uh, in just over half an hour, just under half an hour's time for midweek communion at St Mary's here in Wedmore, Richard and I would really love to see you. That service starts at 9.45 if you could join us. I'm back tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock with uh, Facebook Live uh, Morning Prayer. 
do join me for that if you can. But for now, have a really great rest of the day. Um, and I will look see you tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Good morning to Mike and to Helen. It was so lovely to see you and your husband every week, Helen. And, and good morning to Elizabeth. Lovely to see you too. Uh, have a great day, everyone. And I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Bye for now.